All right, that was the Sonic Colors music, Tropical Resort Act 1. I really hope Sonic Colors does get a remaster this year because there's been a bunch of rumors going about that that's going to happen. And we're not that far from E3, so I'm guessing, fingers crossed, we'll hear about that in the next couple of weeks. But yeah, hi everyone, welcome to the stream. Good evening, I hope you're all feeling good today. I'm feeling fine myself. And uh, before we do video games, uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different. And I don't know if this is going to be... Uh, more of a regular thing in the future, but I kind of want to check out these old videos that I dug up that I'm going to be, I guess you could say, like I hate to use this word because it's like oversaturated, but like more kind of like reaction sort of stuff, like react to it. It's more like just, I, I don't know, maybe like, yeah, yeah, part of it is reacting, but it's also like adding commentary, like my two cents. But I'm I'm going to be more specific after I explain what this is. So... You remember back in the, the, I'm saying this like everybody here is the same age as me, but back in the in the 90s, we used to have these things called video game magazines. I don't think, I, th I think they still exist, you just don't see them as often these days because everybody now has the internet. And of course you've got like mobile phones as well, so it's easier than ever now to get the information on upcoming games and whatever. But back in like the 90s, that wasn't really so prevalent, like the internet, so... Gaming magazines was the way to go, and here is a gaming magazine from the 90s, or the, I think this is the very late 90s, early 2000s, and this is like a UK magazine that I used to read when I was younger, it's called GBX, or Game Boy Extreme magazine, and this was unofficial, this was not endorsed by Nintendo, this was like made by a different publisher, I don't know who it was, I didn't do the research. But it was not, like, sanctioned by Nintendo, so this isn't, like, Nintendo power. Like, it wasn't, like, with Nintendo's blessing, this was, like, a different thing altogether. And it reviewed Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color games. I think this came out when the Game Boy Advance was, like, brand new. I think this was still... Either it was, like, when Game Boy Advance was brand new, or it was, like, a little bit after GBA came out. I'm not so sure, but Game Boy Color was still getting stuff at this time. And I'm just going to show you a little something here. Hang on. Let me just get the... So yeah, let's, let's, let's have a quick look at this before I get to my main point of tonight. So yeah, here's like... Oh, hang on a second. OBS, what are you doing? Please. Okay, so the hotkey for OBS is not working. That's fun. Wait, wait a minute. Hang on. Cool. Thanks, OBS. Sorry, OBS is not behaving. But there's a hotkey for like reset, like for resizing the whole thing in like one. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even do this. Hang on. OBS, please cooperate. Hang on, I, I can fix this, or I'll try to reset. Right here we go. Right, will it work now? Hang on. Right there we go. Right, I've got it to work. Right, so. I'm not going to go over all of this, like we're going to look over a couple pages because I just want to show you this magazine that I used to read. I think this is volume one. And it's like, like look over here, like over here, it's like, Advance warning, here at last, we blow the Game Boy Advance wide open with a sizzling feature on the top game reviews. So yeah, the GBA was brand new at this time. Also nice Photoshop job there on like Rayman holding, I'm not sure what Rayman, uh, what would you call render? Like, I think that's from Rayman 2, possibly? Like, Rayman 2 was new at the time, wasn't it? Also, I'm, I'm going to be very, like, I'm, I'm going to be very bad at organising this, but check this out. The whole magazine is here. I'm not going to look at the whole magazine. I'm just going to look at, like, small bits of it. But, yeah, this is, this is what I used to read, and... I, I say read, but I think I was just like a dumb kid who liked looking at the screenshots and pictures. Like, I wasn't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I actually read these books when I was younger. But it was nice to see, like, upcoming games and shit. Look at this. I think this is the magazine's mascot. Which just looks like one of those how to draw manga character, like, bo uh, books. You know, like, the books you get off Amazon where it's like, how to draw manga, volume one. This is kind of what it looks like. It's either that or it's just like some sort of deviant art drawing. Also, I hate when I reset that. It goes over to the right. Go, to, go, or go to the left. Go to the right, please. 
of these games. Um, it's not like the first half of the stream will not be a game. It's going to be me watching videos. Like I'll get to that in a second. But this is like there is a point to this. Don't worry, there is a point to this. Like I, I will get to it. The firing line. So yeah, you can see like previews of like different games. Kirby's Tilt and Tumble. That fun fact. Like this is a UK magazine, right? So this was a magazine released in in the UK, and I used to read this. But Kirby's Tilt and Tumble never actually left the US, and it never left Japan. Like that game never released over here. I actually own a US copy of that game, like imported, because Game Boy Color wasn't region locked. So I actually do have like a cartridge of this game. But yeah, officially that game never got released over here, so fun fact for you there. I'm going to look at a couple more pages because I'm kind of curious to see what kind of things we're seeing here. Also, I think uh, Pokemon Gold and Silver were brand new at this time. So yeah, more previews of games. Sonic Advance, yeah, so Sonic Advance was, like, brand new at that time, so the GBA was still, like, very, very, very new. There's, like, a whole feature of, like, the Game Boy Advance. So, again, the magazine was mainly focusing on Game Boy Color, but it was also focusing on the up-and-coming Game Boy Advance. And I think after the GBA came out, or has been out for a while, there was, like, they were just focusing more and more on GBA and less on Game Boy Color. So here's, like, a review of Mario Advance. You know, the one where everybody doesn't shut the fuck up. It's just like, no -ho, just what I needed! Like that one. 90%. I mean, that's not, not a bad score, I guess. I mean, I was expecting it to be a bit lower because it's just a port of Super Mario, uh, you know, Super Mario Brothers 2 or Mario USA. This game is good. So, like, I had this game at launch. Like, I had this in Super Mario Advance. Like, F-Zero Maximum Velocity was pretty good. 93%. Rayman Advance, I never had this. Choo Choo Rocket, GT Advance, I think it's just like all the launch games. Mr. Driller 2, 58%, oof. Konami Crazy Racers, I remember that game, like, that was kind of like... Like, you know what's funny, like, Mario Kart came out fairly early into the GBA's life, but this game came out before Mario Kart. So this game sort of like beats Super Mario Kart Super Circuit to the punch. That said, I would say Super Circuit is still the better game of the two. But yeah, this game came out first. And you can see more previews. Pokemon Puzzle Challenge. I streamed that last year, didn't I actually? Like I streamed this. It's like Tetris Attack, but with Pokemon. Karate Joe Space Invasion. And then there's like a massive, don't, don't mind the loading. There's a massive review of like gold and silver, 90%. So yeah, I'm not going to go over this entire magazine, but you get the idea. So why am I bringing this magazine up, GBX? Well, I, I mentioned at the top of this that there used to be video game magazines, but there also used to be something else that certain video game magazines would include. And that is this. So there used to be VHS tapes. I bet some people watching this right now have no idea what the fuck VHS or VCRs even is. But yeah, basically there used to be VHS tapes that you could play in your VCR player that like would show you like upcoming previews and like reviews of like games and stuff. And this was something that I used to love when I was younger because this was like, you know, on top of like getting all the cool pictures in the magazine, you actually get to see like footage of like games that you could like maybe play. So what I have and I'm going to be showing for the next, I don't know, like one or two hours is a series of all the VHS tapes, or at least most of them. Like, I was able to find the majority of the VHS tapes, like, on YouTube. Sadly, one of them seemed to be missing, and I can't find it anywhere, so I think that one may be possibly lost media, at least for now. But I've got volumes 1 through 10, not counting volume 8, so we're going to check those out. Give me one second to get set up here, hang on. Just a second, I'm just getting things. I, I should have prepared better for this. Again, this is a bit of an experimental thing. I, I don't really do this kind of thing very often. But yeah, I've got volume one loaded up. It's about 13 minutes long. And I'm just going to be, I guess we'll, we're just going to be watching this and I'll react to it and just give my two cents. 
Also, the resolution of my video player is very small, so you can see how gigantic my mouse cursor is. Like, look how massive this is. But if I need to pause it and, like, point to something, I guess I can just, you know, use my mouse cursor for that. Now, let's get started. Oh yeah, listen to that. Listen to that humming. That good old VCR humming. Is this going to start? Oh, there we go. Welcome to the first episode of GPX Action. This month and every month, we bring you reviews, previews... Okay, so right away we've got Comic Sans. ...interviews and hot news... And hot news! ...on all the best Game Boy Color and Game Boy Oh god, Boy look how desaturated that looks. Now you can see the latest and greatest games in action. We've also got some sizzling competitions lined up, as well as exclusive interviews with the movers and shakers of the Game Boy scene. The movers and shakers! Sorry, I, I can't get enough of this fucking, like, British voice that's going on right now. So make sure you never miss an episode of GBX Action. So yeah, this is real. I, did, I had, like, several of these VHS tapes growing up. I don't think I've got them anymore. Or if I do have them, they're in storage somewhere. I don't know. There's a very good chance I don't own any of these tapes anymore, and I'm glad that most of them are on YouTube now, like I downloaded them ahead of time. Like, I haven't watched any of these since downloading them. I briefly, like, loaded one up just to make sure it was working before I started the stream tonight. And it's going to be interesting seeing, like, what these, like, the again, these these were, like, these are almost 20 years old. Like, keep that in mind. So it's going to be interesting to see... Like, what you're looking here right now is a time capsule of just, like, old video game previews from, like, a magazine that nobody talks about anymore, so... Enjoy. I'm gonna stop pausing now, unless I need to. Imagination. Interactive Imagination's Magination is taking America by storm. The game's hero, Troy Jones, enters a cave as a dare and is transported into another dimension. I've never heard Can of this. Help him get home? The game is partly inspired by Pokemon. There's over 80 creatures to collect and use as party members. You get to train them up by using them in combat. No UK release date has been set for Magination, but given its popularity in the States, it's bound to make it over here soon. I have never heard of that game. The Napoleonic Wars seems a strange setting for a Japanese strategy game, but Nintendo's Napoleon really shows off what the advance can do. It's a real-time strategy game in the Command and Conquer mold, but in 19th century Europe, there were no walkie-talkies or mobile phones. To give instructions to your troops, you must ride your horse across the battlefield. I, and I have no words for this. Thanks also, to Nintendo published this. The Japanese version of Napoleon is surprisingly easy to play. But even so, we recommend you wait for the UK version and get the most out of this astounding war game. Again, I've never heard of that one either, to be honest. Also, my commentary is not going to be that excellent, so. I need, I need like, certain things to, like, you know, react to. But here's that Konami Crazy Racers that we saw in the magazine. This cartoon style kart driver lives up to its name. It's completely crazy and great fun to play too. The cartoon carts handle like a dream as they screech round the bends and power down the straights. The power ups are cool too. Unless I can't get over this, like, your exhaust yard you know, the, the Comic Sans the text that they're using Konami for like all this stuff. Is that it's shamelessly derivative. It's a blatant copy of Nintendo's Mario Kart, a game that's already thrilled on two console systems. At GBX Action, we reckon you should wait and see what Mario Kart's like before buying this. The Konami Tribute is a good game in its own right, but there's room for improvement. Well, that was the review apparently. Okay, it was very, very, very short. Here's another review. Okay, well, yeah, th this is a good game. This arcade action racer takes itself very seriously. There are no power-ups or vehicle upgrades to be won, but the actions are smooth as Captain Picard's head, and the enemy drivers just <laughs> ooze artificial intelligence. Smoother than fucking Picard's head. Seriously. Did there I hear no that right? There are no power-ups or vehicle upgrades to be won, but the actions are smooth as Captain Picard's head. Oh my god. And the enemy drivers just ooze artificial intelligence. The game's hover vehicles force you to develop a brand new style of driving. Feather the accelerator on the tight bends to improve grip, 
and keep your foot to the floor on the straights. Staying away from the energy draining walls is a winning formula in the early rounds, but as the game progresses, it's harder than a bodybuilder in bother boots. Soon you need to harder than a builder b b <laughs> harder than a bodybuilder in war? I didn't quite catch that. Formula in the early rounds, but as the game progresses, it's harder than a bodybuilder in bother boots. In bother boots? C can someone Figure out what the fuck he's saying there. Formula in the early rounds, but as the game progresses, it's harder than a bodybuilder in bother boots. Soon you need to take the racing. I still don't know what he's saying. Your lap times if you're to win. Some may complain it's only an SNES game with a few tweaks, but as it's an all-time classics SNES game and a real rave on the advance, who cares? F Zero Maximum Velocity has set the standards by which other advanced racers will be judged. Bother boots? I've never heard of it. I don't know what bother boots even are. Uh, let me check that link real quick. See what that's what that is. Bother boots. A bother boot is a type of boot that's been associated with violence. Such boots are generally of sturdy design that may be steel toads. Uh, they're considered offensive weapons by hooligans for kicking opponents while street fighting. Right. Well, I've, I've never heard of bother boots before, but yeah, that's that's what a bother boot is. Interesting. Oh yeah, here we go, Mario Advance. After all these years, the mustachioed maestro can still thrill. Super Mario Advance marks his Game Boy Advance debut, though the game is an update of the classic Super Mario Brothers on the NES. The graphics are incredible and really show off the power of the new machine. The Advance's superb sound chip is also put to good use, with excellent background music, top effects, and even sampled speech. Instead of well, good gameplay, you can't even pass the first level. Them with turnips, so keep your throwing arm fit. An original Mario game for the Advance would be cool, or even a conversion of the SNES game Super Mario World. But Super Mario. Thank Advance you very much, Angelic Gamer eighty nine, for following right. on Switch. Pokemon Gold and Silver, pretty good These games. These offerings need no introduction. It's Pokemon action all the way. Can you catch them all? Like the red and blue games. You remember Gold when Pokemon was like identical. absolutely massive at this point in time? Pokemon, you must trade monsters between them, and even with red, blue, and yellow. The game's built-in clock means some Pokemon can only be caught during the day. Others appear only by night. Some events are triggered by the time of day too. To be honest, Gold and Silver aren't very different from the original Pokemon games, but they take the tried and tested formula a stage further with improved graphics, new monsters, and a bundle of fresh ideas. Also, did anyone else though notice that the audio sounded very weird on that game? I don't know, something was a bit off about it. Rainbow Islands, never heard of that. I'm gonna say that a lot with these games. What the game Boy Color can do. Rainbow Islands is an all-time classic coin-op, and TDK's handheld conversion is near perfect. The aim of the game is Why to is the audio higher, for the game all choppy? The at the top of each level Are they playing this on like a fucking emulator or something? On to the next island. You'll need all your rainbow throwing skills to take out the enemies based around military vehicles, insects, toys, and even the bricks from Arkanoid. Unfortunately, the game's collision detection isn't up to scratch. You frequently batter a baddie with a shot that should have missed. The bosses are of variable quality too. But even so, Rainbow Islands is a delight to play. I'm pretty sure that's not how it's supposed to sound, because they would have mentioned that in the review. But yeah, I can only assume that they played it on an emulator with like Rayman a potato PC. A hit on the PlayStation, and now he's heading for the big time on the Advance too. Mr. Dark has destroyed the harmony of Rayman's universe by stealing the Great Protoon, the planet's energy source. The Electoons, who used to peacefully circle the Protoon, have been captured and imprisoned. It's up to Rayman to rescue them. He I've never walk, played run, this, slide, this game, but I know it's based off of the PlayStation the game, worlds, and apparently it's pretty good, but it can get very difficult. Mr. Dark if he's to save his planet. Rayman is as cute as ever. He has no limbs. Instead, his head, hands, and feet float near his body. Sounds ridiculous, but works really well. The animation's incredible, as you can see from this movie. As always in a Rayman game, the backgrounds are hand-painted and look gorgeous. Four layers of parallax scrolling give them an incredible feeling of depth. It moves very slowly too, with no slowdown or jerkiness at all. It's top-class platform action all the way, and will appeal to Rayman fans old and new. 
Like, the only Rayman game I played is the second game, and that game's pretty fun. The second game's like in 3D, I think. Yeah, didn't that stream Pokemon it's Puzzle Challenge last year? With Pokemon, but Nintendo's Pokemon Puzzle Challenge is still a great puzzler. The aim of the game is to clear tiles by making lines of three. These then disappear, and any above them come crashing down. It's colorful, addictive, and incredibly good fun. With a range of exciting modes, including a great two-player battle, this is a game for puzzle fans rather than Pokemon freaks. I love Tetris Attack, or whatever they want to call it over here in the West. It's called Panel Depon in Japan. Now here's a competition, get your Celebrate pens and paper ready. Action Replay GBX, Daytel Electronics has sent us three cool cards to give away. The three lucky viewers will walk away with the ultimate cheat cartridge for the Game Boy Advance absolutely Whoa. free. To be in with Check a chance that. Game, all you have to do is answer the following question. Who's the delicious all-action girl on the box of the Action Replay GBX? Is it A. Jemima B. Joe Brand C. Sakura Hang on a minute. I think I can get the answer to this actually. Wait, wait one second. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, interact. Yeah, let's go back to the. I think I think it might say it on like the front cover blurb. Let me check real quick. Ugh, this is very finicky. Like trying to go back pages. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. Like I'm, I'm just curious to see if the name actually is shown at the front. Right here we go with the firing line. Uh, yeah, it's Sakura. Right, okay, there you go. There's your answer. We got it, guys. Sakura says, with a Z. If you think you know the answer, call the competition line now on 09064 701 722. See, I don't, I don't think like I mentioned this at the start. I don't think the magazine is actually like uh, endorsed by Nintendo. I think this is just like an independent magazine, and I think. There may have been like an action replay sponsorship, but Nintendo had nothing to do with it, so yeah. And follow the online instructions. Calls cost 60p a minute at all times. Oh, so that's what phone so numbers look like in the UK. The bills before you dial. You'll be asked for your answer and for your name and address. Lines will close at midnight on Wednesday, the 11th of July, 2001. God, that's like almost 20 years ago, holy shit. And announced on the Code Junkies website, www.codejunkies.com. Who wants to check if that line's still active? I'm good. I don't want to waste money. It'll probably be some sort of sex hotline, I don't know. Daytel Electronics has some great Game Boy peripherals in the pipeline, including a cheat card for the Advance, and a device that lets you play Game Boy games on your PlayStation 2. We took a trip to Daytel's development studio in Stone, Staffordshire, to check them out. I believe Daytel is the company that makes the Action Replay, which is that cheat device they mentioned earlier. Yeah, there it is, Action Replay GBX, right? So yeah, the magazine is like sponsored or sanctioned by like the, the Daytel company. Interesting. So this is basically just product placement within their videotape in their magazine. Access hidden weapons, areas, give infinite ammunition, basically turns you into a gaming god. You can breeze through the entire game with that code. Right, what we do, we use the uh, this game trailer we've developed using USB technology. What that does... USB technology? It actually intercepts the game code as it goes... Wait, what game is that? Hang on. We use the uh, this game trailer we've developed using USB technology. What that does, it actually intercepts... Is that Konami Crazy Racers? I think I see the Konami logo there in like Goemon just below it. Yeah, I think that's Konami Crazy Racers. Accepts the game code as it goes through into the Game Boy Advance. And we find whereabouts it actually modifies uh, memory locations, for instance, like bullets would be stored at a certain location in memory. We find that location and stop the code from changing it. So even when you fire your gun, the code says, right, take a bullet off. But we'll stop it, I say, no, ignore it. And so you, you keep it in front of for instance. Also, I know it's like an old v VHS, but why does the audio quality for this guy sound so much worse than the voiceover voice? This is the uh, the actual replay GBX. It's cool. Like the guy, the voiceover for the video is like, "Hi there, welcome to Action GBX. Here's what we got today." And then this guy's like, 
Well, if you just, uh, if you want to modify the code on your Game Boy Advance, you can just do this with the USB technology. I need a prototype version because it's massive. I don't know, it sounds but, uh, really fucking muffled compared there, to the other it one. Be, uh, it would be a smooth fit with the, uh, the Game Boy Advance. Basically, we'll hack all of the games available at release day. But it won't stop there. We have a team of hackers that we actually go over the existing games. Also, I don't know how that thing that I just did updated. right now sounded, so sorry if that sounded really bad on the ears. Professional streamer. The latest codes are available from the GBX magazine, the, uh, the code line, that's I'm gonna have to that available in the actual replay box, and uh, Kojuki's website. Will there be Pokemon codes? Because Pokemon Advanced is going to be such a big hit, we're going to uh, pretty much intend on busting it wide open. Open every single character, basically get Mew, like Mew in the first edition of Pokemon was a secret character, only opened in certain ways. We will make characters like that available from the beginning. Give yeah, you player max stats, infinite items, the works ready. Yeah, who needs to push the truck out of the way to get Mew when you can just use action GBX action replay? Volume one's almost finished, by the way. Top tip. This month's top tip is for electronic arts platformer Merlin. When you reach the end of the game, you face a huge dragon with fiery breath. To kill it, jump from one of his feet to the other, firing upwards mid-jump by pressing up and B. When one of his feet flashes, he's about to lift it. Why are the Game Boy Color games like got very study audio? I think it's just like them playing an emulator on the potato. He's about to breathe fire. Make sure you're not in the air. Shoot his Oh hey there, Angelic. Welcome to the stream. That's all for this month. Stay tuned for more thrills and spills in the next sizzling episode of Action Right, well, GBX. that was the first VHS tape. Two new Zelda games and an oh, yeah, the, the Oracle games. Interactive's dynamic advanced titles. And another top tip. Yeah, stay tuned for another top tip. For a game you've never heard about. Right, okay then, so... There's like another 15 seconds of this left. The nice. I guess that's the publisher of the magazine, possibly? Or maybe the guys who made the videotape? I don't know. Right, okay then. Uh, did you watch Eurovision? I don't really care about Eurovision, to be honest. Right, here we go. Volume 2. Okay. Right, here we go. Welcome to the second fun-paced edition of Action GBX. This month we've bagged an exclusive preview of Pokemon Crystal, as well as a sneak peek of Final Fight 1. We also review VIP, Top Gun, and the amazing Alone in the Dark. Yeah, even though the Game Boy Advance was already out, they're still making Game Boy Color stuff. Grab yourself a pen and paper, and prepare yourself for the offer of a lifetime. You already know that GBX is the only Game Boy magazine worth reading, with get-to-the-point <laughs> reviews, first-on-the-scene previews, in-the-know features, and a unique video packed with exclusive footage of the best games around. Yeah, there's what the so VHS looks like. like. like six issues of GBX? Absolutely. Whoa! Yes, you can really have a six-month subscription to GBX without sending us... Yes, you can have six identical-looking review copies or whatever. ...and tell us your name and address. We'll deliver GBX to your door every month for the next six months. Call now on 09065... Yes, you too can have six identical copies and six identical VHS tapes. Amazing offer. There really is for free! No one short phone asterisk, call asterisk. Asterisk. We don't need a credit card number, and we don't want you to send a single penny. This really is an unbeatable offer. What are you waiting for? Call 09065. I like how they show the exact same thing like three times. To get six issues of GBX absolutely free. Lines are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Calls cost £1.50 per minute at all times and last approximately three minutes. Sorry, this incredible offer is only available to residents of mainland UK. Okay. Right, now for the actual video. Also, this video is like nearly 20 minutes long, so we could be here a while. Final Fight 1. Isn't the game just called Final Fight? It's not called Final Fight 1. Or is it? Wait a minute. Hang on. Game Facts. GBA. 
I'm going to look this up real quick. Okay, list of games. Hang on. All games. Final. Oops. I need to get to... Hang on a second. Why is it only showing... How, how do I get to... Sorry, I, I can't really do this quick enough. Uh, ga game facts is still very archaic in design. Uh, page 7, g give me one second. I'm going to try getting to the F's here. Final... No, that's not it. Page 6. Maybe? You're going to hear that beeping a lot. Please bear with me. Ah. Let me just type final fight in the fucking, like, search bar. I love how when I try to do things quickly... Oh! It actually is called Final Fight 1. Huh, okay then. I, d I didn't know that. Like, I'm, I'm not even kidding, like, it really is called Final Fight 1. I'm, I'm gonna show you real quick. I, I say real quick, but I'm gonna be real slow about it. Like, here, <laughs> here it is on GameFAQs. It, they actually did call the port of the first game Final Fight 1. That's kind of confusing. Like, I thought it was the, just the magazine being like, oh, it's the first game. Capcom's killer beat-em-up is coming to the Advance, and it's kicking serious bottom. Although based on the SNES version, the Game Boy Advance game is enhanced and updated. Now you can play as any of the three characters from the coin-op, Guy, Cody, and Hagar. There's also extra animation scenes between levels and some great artwork introducing the end-of-level baddies. The graphics are huge, and you can duke it out with up to six enemies at a time, with no slowdown at all. No release date has been set for Final Fight 1, but our guess is early September. Also, welcome to the stream, Dr. Ratta, Rat Ratman. I think I said that right, but yeah, welcome to the stream. Right, Pokemon Crystal, the enhanced version of, like, gold and Gotta silver. Catch them all. Pokemon Crystal is to Pokemon Gold and Silver what the yellow game was to Blue and Red. A special edition I never had Pokemon Crystal, I only had like no gold. Radical changes. There's a new trainer in town, and Beta. she's a girl. This is the first time Pokemon players have had the chance to play as a female. The menus and map screens are drawn differently if you choose the female trainer, and her equipment differs slightly too. The chief Pokemon in the game is the Suicune, and it's being pursued by the shady, untrustworthy Wait. Minarchy. But what what was the? What did they say that? The shady un is the Suicune. The Suicune. And it's B two. The chief Pokemon in the game is the Suicune. Wait, is he saying Suicune? And it's B two. The chief Pokemon in the game is the Suicune. And it. What? What is he trying? Is, is it Suicune? I think he said it wrong. It's being pursued by the shady, untrustworthy Minarchy. But what is he up to? There's a new radio station DJ by the lovely Hello Eye, and the secrets of the Unknown are explored too. Graphics are improved, but still limited. There's now a small amount of animation during the fights. Pokemon Crystal is already out in Japan, and expected here later in the summer. We can't wait. Again, I think they're using an emulator to like, get the footage. What's the coolest piece of kit for Game Boy Advance this summer? Then get your hands on Action Replay GBX, the all-in-one oh, go. gaming solution that time will make the, you the envy of the, your time for the like sponsorship, I guess. Of your games collection by arming yourself with infinite lives, ammunition, health, and much more. Action Replay GBX comes preloaded with tons of cheats for all your favorite Game Boy Advance games. Using Action Replay GBX is a piece of cake. The cartridge simply slots into the back of your Game Boy Advance. Plug in any Game Boy Advance game and get ready to show them who's boss. Just bought a brand new game? No problem. You'll find the very latest Action Replay codes in GBX magazine on www.codejunkies.com. I don't think I ever had like an Action Replay GBX. Like I had some sort of like cheat device, but it wasn't that. Easily. So, what are you waiting for? <laughs> I you can enter new codes quickly and easily. Sup. So, what are you waiting for? Put the power in your hands today with Action Replay GBX, the ultimate cheat cartridge for Game Boy Advance. The first Pokemon game I ever played was Pokemon Red, and then I got gold a few years later. 
Wait, I got red, and then I got yellow, and then I got gold. The video game show in Los Angeles, oh, hey, look, it's me and more. lid on the forthcoming GameCube. There's some stunning games in development for the new machine, and it can use the Game Boy Advance as a hand controller. This gives you a personal screen in your joypad, as well as the main game screen on the TV. Yeah, remember the, the Game Boy Advance Link cable? Like, how many fucking games even use that thing? Like, three? Four? At most. One thing Nintendo didn't unveil is which games use the advanced screen or how they take advantage of it. But the possibilities are endless. In a team, the possibilities are endless, and yet we didn't fucking use it at all. Sport, your advanced screen could offer your team stats, showing who's playing well, who's injured, and who's putting in such a poor performance. You'd better substitute them. In an RPG, the advance could offer your inventory, or maybe an also there's Star Fox map, Adventures as you explore. Talking of exploration, in a Mario-style platform game, the GBA controller could house your compass. Use it to tell at a glance whether you're heading in the right direction without it taking up valuable space on the main screen. In a beat-em-up, the advanced screen could offer breakdowns of how to perform your special moves, giving you a great tutorial mode. The possibilities are endless, but only time will tell how yeah, they They literally used. just said we'll the possibilities are endless like 30 seconds ago. Advanced links with the GameCube in future issues. They're running out of things to say about it. Email has revolutionized the way we communicate with other people. Now, now I, I just want to see something has there. I, w I wonder if Bobby at AOL.com is still like a real A. A, a, a real A. a so my brain is trying to say AOL and email at the same time, and I don't know which one to say, but I wonder if that's a real email address. Nice, the way is what I was trying to say there. Other people. Now you can oh, hey there, Dish. Welcome to the stream. Anywhere in the world, using your Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Color. Email with the Game yes, Boy. Yes, it's true. Worldport is an amazing all-in-one email solution. Yeah, and of all GBX products. Emails using your handheld. It's easy to use too. It simply plugs into your Game Boy Advance or Color. Like so a wait, you have to type cartridge. out your emails with Create the D-pad. That would take like a million accounts. years. Then compose your emails on screen using Worldport's virtual keyboard. Oh god, yeah, that would take a million years message, to do that. Holy just shit! Worldport to any telephone socket using the cable <laughs> provided. You yeah, this was before Wi-Fi, by the way. Any type of email account. But that's not all. Worldport is also a powerful personal organizer. Keep track of important birthdays and appointments using the calendar and diary. And store all your favorite email addresses in Worldport's virtual address book. Just hit a button to start emailing a friend. Worldport costs £24.99 in the shops. But thanks to GBX magazine, you can save an incredible £10 off this price Whoa, for a limited period only. Just call 08 And you can use that to buy in all six magazines that all look exactly the same. And say, Sakura says give me £10 off a Worldport. Or visit www.d3world.com to order. All right. www.d3world.com. This domain may be for sale. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. On the internet using our 100% secure server. But hurry, this fantastic offer must end on September the 30th, 2001. Uh, I have a telephone socket in my Game Boy, but no PC to send an email in a more comfortable slash quick way. What kind of situation is that? Interview. Have we seen an interview segment yet? I guess not. Games in the pipeline. There's Denki Blocks, a superb puzzler, Pocket Music, a music creation program. We caught up with Rage Software's Simon Dondervan and got the lowdown on these amazing titles. I think I remember Denki Blocks, it's like a little puzzle game where you like make blocks like connect to each other or something. Denki Blocks is um, a fun puzzle game in much in the vein of something like say Super Tetris. And the gameplay is very simple but very compulsive uh, to play. Yeah, the I think I vaguely remember seeing this game. To connect a number of light coloured blocks together to either create shapes or to create a solid colour mass. The concept itself came from the, the development team Denki, who are puzzle geniuses, and they wanted to create a, a fun, addictive, compulsive game. Uh, there are multiple levels within Denki um, that range into the hundreds. There are eight different rankings within the core single player game. Each ranking has 25 puzzles you need to complete. Workout mode is effectively the training mode. 
In, in workout, the player has the ability to select the number of blocks, the type of blocks um, that they want to play with, and they can either select um, a Oh, so you might notice that the whole like VHS quality is kind of bad on this one because the picture, like the color is kind of like a bit desaturated and it's like, like if you look at the guy's like skin color, you'll see it kind of like flickers a bit, like the color. Time limit or a move limit. Like you see that there? The yeah, you see, you see that? The um, is essentially the presentation of the product. With the Game Boy Advance, you can go to town on... Like sometimes he looks normal, like, other times it looks like Shrek. Textures. Um, and also in the advanced version of Denki Blocks, you actually have an online manual that you can um, essentially learn how to play Denki and how to perfect your skills. Did these say online manual? Yeah, this is this is well before Nintendo started doing those. Multiplayer is one to four players with a single handheld, which is passed around. Um, the multiplayer game modes include battle mode which is battle against the clock to complete puzzles quickly against the opposing player, or race mode, where you compete puzzles quickly to, to win the race. At the time of development, um, no link capability was available, um, but we are looking into inco including link, if possible, before release. Also, there's music. A, a simple game at heart, um, but we've used the power of the Game Boy Advance in terms of making the presentation um, absolutely spot on, and the the way that the uh, mechanics hold together on the Game Boy Advance make it a true next gen Game Boy title. True next gen Game Boy game. Pocket Music um, has been developed by Jester for Rage, who developed the original music for PlayStation 1 and for PC. Um, the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Advance versions are totally new. Um, versions of music but they retain the same basic functionality of music on PlayStation. Basically music allows you to cut and paste an archive of samples that are pre-stored on the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Advance into musical tunes that the player wants to create. On the Game Boy Color version there are around 150 pre-stored samples in different categories such as bass, jungle, etc. On the Game Boy Advance version, there are around 600. On both formats, we're really pushing the, the memory capabilities of both, both handhelds. I don't have much to say about this one. You can record your own samples and integrate them into your riffs and tunes that you create. You create your own samples by mutilating or altering the ones that are pre-stored on the ROM cartridge. See, I've never tinkled with a music maker myself, except for... Like, does anyone remember the Game Boy Camera? Like, there used to be a DJ mode in that where you could, like, kind of make your own little music in it, I think. There was also WarioWare DIY. You could, like, make your own, like, little tunes in that. I'm not really much of, a, like, a budding music maker, but those were kind of fun to, like, mess around with. I think that music um, for the game that Rage is creating is a different product altogether. From what I've seen of the Nintendo product, it looks like a, a good, fun music game, whereas music that we're developing is more of a music creation tool. Alright, time for the competition. To celebrate the launch of Rayman Advance, Ubisoft has given us a copy of the game and a Rayman goodie pack for one lucky winner, with four Rayman goodie bags for the runners-up. Every goodie pack contains a Rayman bouncy ball, a figurine, a multicolored pen and a poster. To begin with a chance of winning, all you have to do is answer the following question. Which company created Rayman? Is it A, Microsoft, B, Matchbox, <laughs> C, Ubisoft? If you think you know the answer, call the competition line now on 09064 774480. And follow the if you guys want to phone this number, go ahead. I'm not going to be doing that. At all times, so get permission from whoever pays the bills before you dial. You'll be asked for your answer and for your name and address. Lines will close at midnight on Wednesday, the 8th of August, 2001. Winners will be picked at random by our computer and announced on the Code Junkies website, www.codejunkies.com. I wonder if Code Junkies still exists. Hang on, I'm going to check that. Sorry if I keep pausing this, but codejunkies.com. Oh, it's, st it's still around. 
I don't know if it's still owned by the same company or whatever, but Go uh, Code Junkies is still a thing. They have they have various products on here. No, no cheat devices, obviously. I don't think cheat devices can be used on like modern platforms these days. But they've got like uh, actually they do have like action replay for the what is that 3ds? I guess it's the 3ds or something. Hang on, let me check this real quick. Yeah, they've they've got they've got like a, an action replay. Oh, it's not a cheat. Actually, it's a cheat device, but it's also like a save uh, device thing where you can like put saves and stuff on it or whatever. But yeah, it's for the 3DS. It's called Action Replay Power Saves Pro. Interesting. I won in the dark. I've never played these games. Info games Alone in the Dark is arguably the spookiest game ever to hit the Game Boy Color. You play a young detective who journeys to a mysterious island. It looks very much like the, the old Resident Evil of a games. Respected archaeologist and the death of his colleague. The game is a survival horror adventure in the Resident Evil mode. You must solve puzzles, explore dark and gloomy locations, and blast a battalion of beastly baddies in your quest for the truth. The graphics are sumptuous, using a level of detail in the game previously only seen on presentation screens. The pseudo 3D perspective works well too. Moving from one screen to another can sometimes be disorientating, and it's a game you have to play for a while to appreciate. Remember that, uh, like, remake of Resident Evil 1 that was going to be made for the Game Boy Color, but it got cancelled, and then, like, many, many years later, like, a beta ROM for it came out, or, like, an alpha version of the ROM? But yeah, that this kind of reminds me of that right but now. Overall, Alone in the Dark is a cool thriller. Top Gun. Did you hear about Zombies Ate My Neighbors on the Switch? Yeah, I did hear about that. Like, that and Ghoul Patrol are going to be coming to Switch. I don't know if I'm going to pick them up because I've never played those games before and I hear that there's no online co-op on it, which kind of sucks because that's something I kind of wish was on there. If you liked Desert Strike, you will love Top Gun, but only if you're a modern-day Biggles. It ain't easy. You patrol the skies in your fighter jet, taking out enemy planes, tanks and buildings with an amazing arsenal of high-tech weapons. Fly carefully, hit a tree or mountainside and your mission is over. It's not terribly original. The Strike series of games got there first. Even so, it's maddeningly addictive, fun to play, and a real challenge. If you think most Game Boy games are too easy, take to the skies with Top Gun. Again, sorry for the, the colour of this video, like, being weird. Oh god, VIP. Is this not that game with, like, Pamela Anderson? Pamela Anderson's Sky yeah, it is. Show VIP I didn't know there was a Game Boy version of this seriously. game. Based around a group of bodyguarding babes, it's just a bit of early evening fun. Maybe the Game Boy Color offering should take itself a little more seriously. It's not that there's anything disastrously wrong with it, it's just that it seems to have been designed in a lunch hour and tested during a commercial break. Very little <laughs> thought has been put into the level design, resulting in a cliched and formulaic game. It's far too short too, you can complete it within an hour of taking it out of the box. Published by Ubisoft by the way. Bomberman Tournament. I think this was the Game Boy Advance game. Bomberman has starred in some sizzling console games, and Bomberman Tournament on the Game Boy Advance is no exception. Like the N64 version, is this not the one, one that kind of like is mode, similar you to Pokemon? Your surroundings and bomb your way to the boss baddies, though the viewpoint is more like that of the SNES game, an angled overhead perspective rather than tactics destroying 3D. But it's as a multiplayer game that Bomberman Tournament really shines. Up to four players can link up with a single cart, laying traps and blasting baddies until there's only one bomber bombing. Unlike previous 2D versions, dead players can throw bombs from the side of the arenas. Ideal if you need to blast someone who's way in the lead. It's a fair old blast in single player mode, but as a multiplayer game, it's one of the best ever. You know, I find it funny, like, it's got a big, like, single player, like, story mode from what I understand, but they barely show in the story mode or any of, like, the, you know, the features of it. Instead, the majority of that was, like, here's the multiplayer. It's 
it's not the real-life driving simulation racer we're waiting for, but GT Championship is still a fair blast. The graphics are superb, except for the parallaxed scenery, which reminds us of a Game Boy Color driver. All the necessary options are there, and the cars sound like real mean machines as they zip around the tracks. Unfortunately, your opponents don't drive as intelligently as they might, and the handling's not as smooth as it might be. Overall, it's a good the way game, the ground moves in that footage kind of looks weird. Driver in the near future. Right, I think the, this volume's almost over. Oh, here's the top tip. Get ready for it. Cannon Fodder is one of the hottest Game Boy games ever, but it sure ain't easy. To better the baddies and beat the game, you've got to fight clever as well as tough. Look for cheap and cheesy ways of killing your foes without getting in their line of fire. When someone's firing a bazooka at you, if he hits a nearby object first, he might kill himself. Use this to your advantage. Here, a grenade thrown over the trees at a hut on the edge of the screen takes out a soldier inside before he can enter the battle. The empty hut makes good cover too. Learn to use the terrain in this way, and victory is yours. I've never played Cannon Fodder. That's all for this month. Next month, we'll bring you more great previews, reviews, and competitions, along with a sizzling top tip. Look out for exclusive video footage of Tony Hawk's 2 and Denki Blocks on the Advance, as well as Snoopy Tennis and Robocop on the Color. Action GBX. You know it makes sense. Right, well, that's their tagline. You know it makes sense. Uh, they'd mentioned uh, they're going to be showing more Denki blocks. I thought they'd just shown that during this episode. Right, okay, then. Well, here's volume three. I don't know if I'm going to go through all these tonight. I think maybe I'll go through about half of them and then maybe save another half for another time because I don't think I'm going to, like, watch all of these, like, back to back because they're a bit longer than I expected. We're back with another sizzling episode of Action GBX. We've got some of the Advance's hottest new and forthcoming games for you, including Spider-Man, Mysterio's Menace, X-Men, Reign of Apocalypse, and the sublime Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Best of all, we've got the brand new Tomb Raider game for the Game Boy Color in all its brilliantly animated glory. I never played the Tomb Raider Game Boy games, but I heard they were like, pretty good for like the animation and stuff. Grab yourself a pen and paper and prepare yourself for the offer of a lifetime. You already know that oh, is this the Sex Magazine thing? I think, I think it's the same thing as before. Yeah. Just gonna skip through that because we saw that already. Alright, here we go. Preview. Spider-Man X-Men. Divisions running wild on the Game Boy Advance with some marvelous Marvel titles in the pipeline. Spider Man Mysterio's Menace is the first Game Boy Advance game to feature our friendly neighborhood web slinger. Supervillain Mysterio is in the Big Apple, turning the town into a giant movie set and playing tricks on your head to try to defeat you. But he's forgotten one thing you're Spider Man and you refuse to lose. Take care, victory could be a mere illusion. X-Men Reign of Apocalypse sees you lost in an alternative timeline. You and your fellow X-Men discover that Apocalypse reigns supreme in a parallel world where he has complete control. Your only hope, to fight your way through numerous enemies and threats until you reach the warp gate to return home. But will you survive long enough to escape? Both games should be ready around autumn, and there's bound to be more great Marvel games to follow. I mean, from what I can see, all the sprite animations for those games look decent, but yeah, I can't really say if they're good the games or not. I mean, it's published by Activision, so you be the judge of that. Champion Golf. Championship Golf, sorry, not Champion Golf. ESPN Championship Golf 2002 brings the first real Oh, check out them Mode 7 the graphics. To the portable convenience of the Game Boy Advance. Fun for single players and equipped for multiplayer competition, this game has something for every duffer. Choose from up to 14 golfers, five beautifully modeled golf courses, and a variety of different clubs. Varying weather and wind conditions add to the action that will challenge players of all levels. ESPN Championship Golf 2002 is already out in Japan as Golf Master. It's due in the States in the autumn and should arrive here before Christmas. I'm guessing that game came out before Mario Golf on GBA. It's here. The peripheral Game Boy Advance owners all over the world have been waiting for has finally arrived. 
action replay GBX. I think we saw this already. For the advance, blows get on the game yeah. advance. Unlike did we see this already? Action replay GBX busts open any game on the Game Boy Advance. Unlike regular cheats which have been designed by programmers, on Action Replay GBX we've actually found the cheats ourselves. So for example, if you go into any game, uh, it allows you to skip levels, gain infinite lives, extra Yeah, I ammo, think it's a different guy this uh, time. all kinds of things with a game that normally you would never be able to do. Sup? I don't know if you saw that on the background. Game Boy Advance has been launched into a, a totally wired world uh, and that's something that we're fully aware of in designing Action Replay GBX. Um, it basically is your gateway to an entire online community of Game Boy Advance gamers. So for example, when you go online with uh, Action Replay GBX, uh, you'll be able to, we envisage that you'll be able to... Okay, yeah, so, so I keep like pointing that out, but that's just... Something about this whole image is like perfect, like this guy's face and ju just just in the background. Change game saves, download snapshots, uh, cheats, solutions. Basically, you'll have access to a whole uh, montage of online stuff. Not at all. Uh, with Action Replay GBX, all you need to do is plug a game cartridge into the Action Replay GBX itself, turn your machine around. Wait a minute. Into the Action Replay GBX. He didn't plug it in all the way. It's like you see how the cartridge is slightly askew. Like it's like you see how like the look at the the line of this, and then look at the angle at which the cartridge is put in. Like he didn't put it all the way in. Fix itself. Turn your machine around and pop the Action Replay GBX with the cartridge into the back of your Game Boy Advance. As you can see, it's not bulky, it's not heavy, and it doesn't get in the way of your fingers at all. Uh, new codes for new games appear on the day that the game is released, uh, usually. We've got a team of dedicated full-time coders whose job it is to find the codes for these games. You can get new codes for your Action Replay GBX from GBX Magazine, obviously, uh, or you can go to www.codejunkies.com, or alternatively, there's a phone line that you can ring from anywhere, anytime. Uh, Action Replay GBX is out now, uh, and you can get it from all good game stores, or order online from www.dtworld.com Which no longer exists. Not at all. Uh, we'll take a look at it right after this break. Wait, what do you mean after this break? Email has revolutionised the way we communicate with other people. Oh, we're people. talking about this email now thing for the Game Boy Advance again. Friends, anywhere, boy advance or come. Your message are our power ups. Yeah, it's the same thing. Alright, moving on. Oh, okay, so now they're just talking about this again. Action Replay GBX is easy to use. Just plug it into the GBA, fit the game cart into the Action Replay GBX, and then follow the straightforward menus. Go for Select Game, and choose it from the list of titles already stored in the Action Replay GBX. You then get to pick which codes to activate, such as Infinite Lives, Infinite Energy, and more. Then start up the game, and the cheats are yours. If you want to add or remove codes or even new games, go for the management option. Here you can input a new game into the Action Replay GBX's memory or add codes to start up the game. We've got five to give away. Competition for this. Of winning... Right, so we, we just had like an interview with like the developer of GBX Action Replay. Then we had a brief like, you know, uh, they, they sidetracked a little bit and showing you the email thing. Then they did a full review for Action Replay GBX, and now there's like a competition for Action Replay GBX. If you if you had your doubts that the the company who published this magazine wasn't you know peddling this software, there you go. I, th I think it's pretty apparent at this point. Just answer this simple question: Who makes the Action Replay GBX? Detail. Is it A. Microsoft, B. Kellogg's, <laughs> C. Detail Electronics? When you think you know the answer, call our competition hotline on 09064 77. Like, I love these old, like, phone competitions where they always the have, like, one joke answer that you would never think anybody would ever times. say. But you so know, statistically speaking, somebody has to have said that. You'll be asked for your answer uh, and for your name and address. 
Lines will close at midnight on Wednesday, the 12th of September, 2001. Winners will be picked at random by our computer and announced on the Code Junkies website, www.codejunkies.com. Right, now can we see some game reviews, maybe? Or are we going to see some more action replay GBX TM? All right, here we go. Time for another game. Driving games have been a hit and miss affair on the Game Boy Color, but Colin McRae Rally is a definite hit. Unlike most races, you can't beat this one just by holding the accelerator and steering. Its driving physics are exceptional. You really have to think about where you accelerate and where you brake. It's a little too ugly to snatch a GBX seal of approval, but it's still great fun to play. If you liked Toka, you love Colin McRae Rally. I've never played those kind of games before. Not really my cup of tea. What a game! Even on the small screen, Lara's larger than life and twice as lovely. From New York rooftops to New Orleans swamps, Lara runs, jumps, climbs and fights to uncover the mystery behind a sacred sword. Throughout the game, players explore a variety of action-packed locations, including abandoned subways, swampy jungles, and even an underwater Like the submarine. spray animations look pretty impressive for Game Boy Color. It looks very fluid. comes to life with amazing animation effects and a variety of puzzles, such as reactivating generators to access elevators and firing a cannon to clear a room. And it looks like a 2D version like Tomb Raider. Game Boy Color for the video games vixen, and a Kinda like Pseudo Prince of Persia. In its own right. 90%. So yeah, that, that game looks decent, I guess. Robocop. The robotic Rosser's back, and he's on a mission to stop a gigantic brain from taking over the world. Okay, it's a silly plot, but no sillier than an android policeman in a tinfoil suit. I wonder if it rusts in the rain. The game's okay, but by no means a classic. It seldom excites, and its mixing of blasting power and RPG action doesn't really work. However, it's well presented and fun for a few plays. For die-hard Robocop fans only. Alright. Okay, so this one is pretty, like, well-known on GBA. The Hawkster has thrilled on most cutting-edge consoles, and the Game Boy Advance is no exception. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 is a bona fide classic, and captures the thrills and spills of extreme skateboarding brilliantly. The overhead perspective Wait, didn't this game have, like, Spider-Man as an unlockable character? Designed and packed with trick opportunities. Like, not just the console really version, but I think the Game Boy Advance version also had, like, Spider-Man as an unlockable character. stunning secrets to find, too. Even if you're not into skateboarding, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 rocks. It will keep you playing for months to come. Oh yeah, remember Ready to Rumble? That was like a Dreamcast game. On the Dreamcast and PlayStation 2, it was a fun if limited fighter. But on the Advance, it sucks like an industrial strength vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Ready to rumble boxing round two thrills right up to the opening bell. The characters move well enough, albeit in an exaggerated cartoon shuffle, but when they start swapping punches, the action's KO'd by a series of fatal flaws. Your fighter punches far too slowly, making combinations and tactics impossible, and the fake 3D rotating ring forces the action into the edges of the screen. This is without a doubt the worst launch title on the Advance. Oof, 23%, did you see that there? Yeah, tw 23%, also the game kind of looked like shit as well. Kind of a shame because Ready to Rumble Boxing on the Dreamcast, like I remember playing that growing up, is I would consider like a, a cult classic. It's like a very arcadey like boxing game. Title on the advance. It's a shame the Game Boy Advance version sucks. So we're almost at the end of this volume, and I, we see the top tip again. I guess this is like the last thing to put like at the very end. So saving this for last, I would assume that they're the most proud of this particular feature. So let's see what it's about. 
There are some great expert techniques to master in Nintendo's hot but hard F-Zero Maximum Velocity. For a turbo start, make sure your engine is revved to the point where your hull starts to flash as the race starts. Do not over rev or your boost gives way to a power down. The best way to turn tight corners is to feather the accelerator to stabilize your craft. This helps prevent understeer. Some tracks contain jumps. To achieve a perfect landing, press down on the D-pad as you land. That just wraps up this right, month's episode, go. but there's more to come next issue. Look out for Earthworm Jim and High Heat Major League Baseball 2002 on the Advance, and also Microsoft Pinball Arcade on the Color. Naturally, we'll give you some top competitions and features as well. Action G... Microsoft Pinball Arcade, never heard of it. BX. Make sure you never miss a show. Right, so I'll stick the next one on. I don't know how much more of this I'm going to do. There's like 10 volumes and we're about to do volume 4. Maybe I'll do half today and then we'll do a half another time. Sorry if my commentary is a little bit lacking, like I'm not that great at like, you know, time, saying stuff. Games were given the action GBX I've never played Earthworm Jim, is that game any good? Footage of the greatest games, including the amazing Mario Kart oh, there's Super, Super Mario Kart, Kart. Super Circuit. Backtrack, and the inevitable Street Fighter 2X Revival. I remember Super Circuit being a decent Mario Kart game. video games most enduring sagas is coming to the Game Boy Advance. Super Street Fighter 2X Revival brings all the thrills of a 2D beat-em-up to the handheld. The Game Boy Advance game is a conversion of the last game in the Street Fighter 2 series. It was the first to include a combo counting system and Super Meter. It also has a huge lineup of characters including Chung Li, Ryu, Dialism, E Honda and the irrepressible Ken. It's kind of weird listening to this, like, I think it might be a different person talking, but it's also kind of weird just, like, not having background music, like, just them without any, you know, like, backing music. Like, listen, included combo counting. like, when they count, like, when they list off the character names and they have to, like, pause in between each name, like, it's kind of weird just, like, listening to all of that without the music. System and Super Meter. It also has a huge lineup of characters, including Chung Li, Ryu, Dialism, E Honda, Da dialism? <laughs> you mean you mean dialism? And the irrepressible Ken. You can juke it out with a friend over the link cable, but you need two copies of the card to do so. Okay, that was one thing. Uh, sorry to interject again, but this was one thing about like Game Boy Advance that annoyed me. Like there was this cool thing you could do called I, I don't know if there was like a name for it, but basically you could like do multiplayer with like a single cartridge. Except a lot of the games didn't even offer that, and it was like, oh, you have to have a second cartridge to like play it with, and it kind of sucked because I didn't, I didn't have that many friends growing up, and I don't think most of us owned the same games, so it was kind of like hard to get multiplayer for certain games because of that. Batman Vengeance. All right. Still using Comic Sans, by the way. New adventure. Batman punches and kicks his way through the foes in typical scrolling beat em up style, but also uses heaps of bad devices along the way. Look out for grappling hooks, boomerangs, and more. The game packs some great visual tricks, including cutscenes taken from the PlayStation 2 version. The game has a terrific plot and a fine old school atmosphere. If it can offer some serious thrills without appearing dated, it could be yet another winner for the Cape Crusader. Okay. Is there like a sponsorship on the No, okay. I thought I was going to say... Sorry, I'm, I'm bad at speaking while being spoken to. Uh, I thought it was going to be like another sponsorship thing where it's like, okay, let's talk to a member of the develop development team of like the action replay. But no, it's like a different like studio crawfish. Crawfish Interactive is one of the most successful Game Boy programming teams ever. Crawfish has some hot games in the pipeline. Crawfish has done some good stuff for Game Boy. Classic Amiga titles. We went to Croydon to check them out. 
I, I believe they did the port of like I recently saw a video about this from MVG on YouTube, but I was already aware of it like long before that. I think they did like the Game Boy Advance port of like Street Fighter Alpha Three, which is like technically one of the most impressive like ports you can ever do on like a system of that relatively limited like technical specs. The main thing we wanted to achieve with X vs 7 was to have real environments, real weapons, and the people you were actually against were also real people, uh, instead of having aliens. Effectively, when we, when we went about creating a first-person shooter on GBA, uh, obviously the, the inevitable thing was, is it going to be too difficult to do? So we were looking back on, uh, on what was done on the SNES originally, and Doom was done. Uh, so we, we realised that that was a possibility. Uh, you know what's so weird? There is a, there's a the lot of like, first-person shooter games on GBA, like ones that do like 3D graphics. Yeah, the current version that you uh, can see of X vs. Sever, there, there's certain changes that we're making as far as the head-up display, making that more graphical, uh, ensuring that the AI system is, uh, is more intelligent than it is at the moment. With the moves, we've actually got strafing left and right, of some normal, normal movement left and right forwards, plus we've got duck, uh, we have sniper rifles, so you've got zooming in on the sniper rifle, uh, and also a uh, firm Oh moving. yeah, that's right, Crazy Taxi was on GBA. I remember that game not running so well though. We have three multiplayer modes, which are uh, deathmatch, uh, obviously standard, for, you know, up to four players. Uh, we have bomb kit, which allows uh, up to four players to race around trying to find elements of a bomb. Each person has their own segment of the bomb that they have to try and find. Uh, we also have an assassination mode with uh, a VIP that has to be assassinated. So you have one person that is the assassin that's trying to get through to a, a, an area where three, up to three other people are actually trying to secure this, this VIP and stop them being assassinated. Speedball 2, never heard of it. Uh, the reason we kind of went for Speedball 2 to start with um, was because you kind of look at the, the, the way that the Game Boy Advance allows you to do 2D games at the moment and it just allows itself perfectly for those Amiga classic games and the, the, the stuff that everybody remembers with, uh, with a fond heart. I love like when he was like allows describing itself, that now, the, the... it was just like this fucking very slow dramatic zoom happening right now. Like, why did the camera zoom in when he was, like, talking about that? Like, why wasn't it just static that entire time? Oh, the hey there, Nicky. I'm doing all right. How are you? The Amiga version. We've, our main aim was to stay as faithful as possible to, to the version that everybody knows and loves. Um, that and, and the Mega Drive were really the two that we try to keep as close to. Yeah, on, on this, obviously, we've got multiplayer modes. Uh, we've got your standard two-player matches that you would have, but we've also implemented a, a, what we would say is a unique four-player, uh, something that we're, we're, we're really testing out at the moment to see whether or not, rather than having it two-on-two -two with teams, we've got it so that you've got uh, a tournament mode where Pretty tired, you're about four to go together, to sleep. you always play against Oh, that's fine. What person, time is it over there? And at the end of each that, that match, you would then swap and play one of the other people in the, in the foursome. Driven. One thing that we made sure we driven because of oh, the, you love the, the UK as well. Uh, right, okay. We wanted to try and make sure. Yeah, that sometimes I forget stuff like that. Film as we possibly could. The story mode in the game actually takes elements from the film. As I said, with the coin mode, going racing around taking the coins, but also there's elements where, where you've got to try and help your teammate. The whole idea of it is that the, the Stallone character is uh, a help to his teammate, the other, the other person... UK gang? Yeah, I think a lot of us here are from the UK the right now, which is weird, because usually it's mostly like an American audience watching my streams. We've obviously got arcade mode, where you can uh, go through, racing through all of the tracks. Uh, basically, you have to finish in the top three on each one to progress through. We've got a standard championship mode, where you try and, obviously, you are then trying to win the races. We've also got... Um, I wonder if Street Fighter Alpha which, uh, 3 was, like, from the film, being worked on at this time, uh, like, if it's available or whatever. The, the two characters also, what's that black rectangle on the through screen? Through like, that's not me doing that. A lot of the Game Boy Advance titles, race titles that are out at the moment, um, are obviously from a behind-the-car view. 
uh, and something that we wanted to try and have because of the, the blocking element that we, we explained with uh, trying to make sure that you help your opponent win. You, you really yeah, that's need to weird. What, what the hell are they blocking out? So that fits really well into more of an isometric style that we've gone for. Allows us to have a lot more detail in the track. Like they just uh, censored got, like a part uh, of the screen. I'm not sure what the reason the for car. that was. We've got a lot more explosions in there, uh, oil slicks, a lot of the crowds jumping up and down. Yeah, we've got many games that obviously are, uh, have been done by the bitmaps on the Amiga and Mega Drive in the past, and these include Chaos Engine, Gods, Magic Pockets, Kadava, and Xenon 2. All right, cool interview. Email has revolutionized the way we can right, email one again. Email just skip this. Price from double o it's the exact same, offer. just the exact same commercial as before. Batman Vengeance is about to explode onto the Game Boy Advance, and to celebrate, Ubisoft has sent us a sack full of cool Batman goodies. Two lucky readers will walk off with a copy of Batman Vengeance for the Game Boy Advance. And that's not all. We have five Batman and Joker keyring sets, five Batman figurines, and ten Batman posters to give away too. To be in with a chance of winning, all you have to do is answer the following question. Who's Batman's boy wonder sidekick? A. Pigeon B. Seagull C. Robin when you think you know the answer, call the competition line now on 09064 701 I can't think of anything clever, but yeah, I'm sure you guys can come up with something funnier than me. Calls cost 60 p a minute at all times, so get permission from whoever pays the bills before you dial. You'll be asked your answer and for your name and address. Lines will close at midnight on Wednesday 10th October 2001. Winners will be picked at random by a computer and announced on the Code Junkies website www.codejunkies.com Again, codejunkies.com still exists. Which is interesting. Right, we've got about five minutes of this one left. The Game Boy Advance version of Earthworm Jim is a straight port of the SNES game, but with a Mega Drive's bonus level thrown in for good measure. All the inane humour of the original is here. Watch as Jim flings cows through the air, grabs ropes with his head, and dodges falling refrigerators. Leave him alone for a few seconds, and he does all manner of weird things, like pull a muscle man pose or spin his gun. Overall, Earthworm Jim is a colorful chuckle along, but not an outstanding platformer. If your sense of humor is suitably warped, you should get more than a few laughs out of it. Yeah, I've never played Earthworm Jim before. I'm not sure if that's a good game or not. Oh, here's Super Circuit. I kind of like this game growing up. This is the one we've all been waiting for. Mario Kart thrilled on the SNES, but spilled on the N64. <laughs> Thankfully, Mario... I, I liked him, what he said there, like it thrilled on the SNES, but spilled on the N64. Mario Kart Super Circuit on the GBA is a return to form for the mustachioed maestro's kart capers. To get ahead, you've got to drive like a demon, take corners on the apex, Clip the curbs to gain precious seconds and use your power-ups wisely. The coins from the SNES version are back, and unlike the N64 offering, the tracks are mercifully short, so the computer doesn't have to cheat to keep you in among your opponents. An outstanding four-player version rounds off the greatest advance racer to date. Once again, the Mario Kart series has delivered a genuine classic. Don't miss it! Alright, short review, but decent score. 93%. Right, I think this may be the last review. Microsoft Pinball Arcade. Yeah, how, how do you follow up reviewing a game as big as, like, Super Circuit? Like, keep in mind, this was, like, 2001, so Super Circuit on GBA was, like, a big release. How do you follow up that? Oh, let's just do Microsoft Pinball Arcade. It's got five tables on Game Boy Color, no less. the last version of Windows, but Cryo's conversion of Microsoft's Pinball Arcade is still only average. The tables are faithful conversions of genuine historical pinball tables dating from the 30s to the 80s. It does a great job of showing how the tables progressed from 1931's Baffle Ball, which is little more than a bagatelle, to 1982's multi-level Haunted House. 
The problem is, most of the tables are too old and too dated to cut it. Only Haunted House excels. Even so, if you're a pinball wizard and want to know about the roots of your fave game, you'll flip for Microsoft Pinball Arcade. Eh, I'll stick with Pokemon Pinball, thanks. Backtrack. The single player game in Backtrack. Oh yeah, wasn't this like a Doom clone before Doom came out on GBA? Based around freeing captured humans, and it's kind of shit apparently. Sci-fi stages, taking out foes and looking for that elusive secret door. The multiplayer death matches are where the fun's really to be had. First-person shooters are ideal for multiplayer mayhem, and taking out your mates is excellent fun. What's more, you can even play the multiplayer games on your own against computer-controlled bots. 82%. It's the multiplayer options that make Backtrack what it is, easily making up for the disappointing one-player missions. Okay, so it's a first-person shooter, and during that entire time, there was no shooting involved. It was just a guy walking around getting people out of, like, test tubes. That's basically all they've shown now. And here's the top tip, so this is the final feature. If the enemies are ducking under your punches in Rayman Advance, here's a sneaky tactic that topples the terrors with ease. First, wind up a really big punch. Then, fire it over your target's head. When it's travelled as far as it can go, duck. Your enemy is splattered by your returning fist. Another neat trick is to stand on a blueberry while it's still. Throw a long punch in the opposite direction to the one you wish to travel, and duck. Your fist hits the berry and gets you moving. Wow, great tip, That's about thanks. All for this month. Next issue will bring you more top games with sizzling previews, outstanding reviews, and maybe a Is that Robot Wars? So, what eight games oh, there's Street Fighter Alpha 3. We ain't telling. You'll just have to stay tuned and look out for next month's episode. Uh, let's see how long the next one is. I might do one more. Actually, I can't see the length of it. Hang on. Let me just uh, check my download real quick so I can see how long this is. The next one is 10 minutes long. Right, let's do, let's do one more. And I'll save the rest for next time. So this one will be 10 minutes long. So it's like not as long as the one we just watched. Okay then, so we got part five, and then there's like four more after that, which we can do another time. We're back with another sizzling episode of Action GBX. This month, we've got some breaking news on the GameCube. A sizzling first look at Golden Sun and Mario Advance 2. And reviews of... Also, the pixel's really dark on this one. ...and WWF Betrayal. Check out our top tip on Kuro 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 and 2. Yeah, you might notice the picture quality is like kind of changed with this one. When Nintendo converted Super Mario Bros. to the GBA under the name Mario Super Mario Bros. Advance, many thought they'd picked the wrong game. Super Mario World is what we want, they cried. Well, soon we'll have it. The SNES Classic is coming to the Advance as Mario Advance 2. Super Mario World is one of the greatest video games ever. It's huge, brilliantly designed, and packed with features. Watch out for Yoshi. You can climb on his back and ride him. No release date has been set for Mario Advance 2's UK release, but rest assured, it'll be a big day in the history of the Game Boy Advance. Don't have much to add to that one. I've never played Golden Sun, but I've heard that game's pretty good. Is this the greatest RPG ever? It's going down a storm in Japan, and looks set to do the same here. You and your companions must recover a stolen artifact to prevent the destruction of your world. Nothing original in the plot, but in a first for a console RPG. Two players can take on a character each, and explore the game separately or together. The graphics are absolutely marvellous too, but as developers Camelot were responsible for Mario Golf and Mario Tennis on the Game Boy Color, that's no great surprise. 
Yeah, sorry about the picture being really fucking dark. I'm not sure why this video in particular is so dark compared to the other ones. Nintendo GameCube is already out in Japan and is coming to the UK in the new year. We all know certain GameCube games use the Advance as a hand controller for added playability. But are the games up to scratch? We went to the Nintendo Show 2001 to find out. Mario's lost in a ghost-filled mansion, and it's up to Luigi to find him. I love the Luigi's mansion. In Luigi's mansion are incredible, with dust blowing around as you vacuum, and superb lighting effects as you catch the ghosts in your torch beam. The controls are innovative too, using both of the analog sticks. It seems Luigi's starring debut is a real winner. <laughs> Ride on the backs of dinosaurs, fly spaceships, oh, yeah. solve puzzles. You do it all in Star Fox Adventures Dinosaur Planet. It's so big, only the GameCube can contain it. Pikmin sure. defies categorization. Individually, the tiny creatures are weak, but gather a posse of them, and you're soon smashing obstacles. I've never played a Pikmin blows. game, so. Wave race, blue storm. Oh, this game is good, though. The water effects are first rate, and the jet skis are dream race. to control. To be honest, Super Smash Bros. Melee looks like a souped up N64 game, and at present, it doesn't play that well either. It's too much of a button basher, with little in the way of tactics. Let's hope it improves before it's finished. So wait, wait, what did he say about Smash? Soup top N64 game. Soup top N64 game. Present, it doesn't play that well either. It doesn't play that well either? The fuck are you talking about? It's too much of a button basher. Too much of a button basher. A little in the way of tactics. Let's hope it improves before it's finished. So this is one of those, I guess this is one of those like criticisms or let's just say in quotations criticisms where people would, like, accuse Smash Bros. of being, like, a party fighter compared to, you know, like, uh, contemporary, like, uh, <laughs> fighting games. But yeah, no, this person doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about, clearly. This third-person action game sees you fighting evil throughout the ages. From ancient Rome to Napoleonic battlefields, you take on hordes of creatures using only the weapons of that time period. NBA Eternal Cold Darkness Side is a pretty interesting game. Isn't the strongest game in the Cube's lineup. It plays a mean game of basketball and the players move fluidly, but it isn't the quantum leap in sports sims we all expect. I think we'll get so a Luigi's Mansion it. for it at some point. Most Cube games are looking fantastic, and this is just the beginning. Look out for more news on the GameCube and how it links with the Advance in future episodes. Like after the success of Luigi's Mansion 3, I could see 4 being in the works. Crawfish Interactive has so many great games on the way. Oh, they're talking about Crawfish again? Okay, cool. Interview. This month, we once again speak to Crawfish Director of Development, Mike Merrin, about some hot up-and-coming advanced titles. Oh, here we go, Street Fighter Alpha 3. Again, Street Fighter Alpha 3, like, the fact that they got this game running on Game Boy Advance hardware when you consider what the game was originally like in the arcade machines, is nothing short of like technically impressive. Again, watch the Modern Vintage Gamer video on YouTube because I watched that last week and it's like a really good breakdown of how they managed to get this game working on that system. The version we're actually converting is from the Dreamcast, which is the very latest incarnation of the Street Fighter series. Uh, it utilizes everything that's in, in the Dreamcast version, the isms, Xism, Vism, all of the additional modes, the world mode, versus mode. To ensure that we could get the same game mechanics on a four-button system, uh, obviously the, the, the control method had to be changed slightly. Light kicks, heavy pit kicks are, are kept true on the buttons, so you've got the A and B button for light kicks and the shoulder buttons for uh, heavy kicks. To ensure that you could get medium kicks, this was utilised by doing A and either left or right on D-pad. Obviously with an 8 megabyte cartridge that's uh, quite a lot less space than there is on a Dreamcast CD. and so. We had to use an awful lot of compression on the system to make sure that we could fit all of the characters and backgrounds in there, um, as well as making sure we were selective about certain uh, an background animations. So although there's everything in there, certain things that, that you wouldn't notice necessarily on a small screen will have been removed. Yeah, there's actually 37 characters in the uh, GBA version. Uh, the Dreamcast version actually only had 34. 
uh, but uh, Capcom said, is there any way you can get an extra three on there? Uh, and we said, okay. So yeah, we, uh, we really pushed it to the max. We've also uh, ensuring that because there's 37 characters in the original Dreamcast version, every single character had their own background. Uh, and again, in the Game Boy Advance version, each character will have their own background, each will have animations, uh, as well as parallax scrolling on each of those backgrounds as well. Again, that's pretty cool that they managed to like get that much content squeezed down onto like a GBA cart, and I don't. Obviously, the music wasn't intact; like they had to like scale that back quite a bit. But everything else on a visual scale was like really good for that game. Within Freestyle Scooter, you've got a number of different tasks that you have to complete on each of the arenas you're given. Wait, is this These that Scoot the Burbs game that Vinny wheels, used to make uh, fun of? Accumulating a number of grind points is. or grind distance. Uh, also, a number of trick points and uh, combos for each trick that you do. The main differences with uh, Razor Freestyle Scooter and Tony Hawk's is that the, the, the arenas are more um, fun, if you like. They're, they're more sort of ch tongue in cheek. I think also, I would say the game is more pick up and play than Tony Hawk's is. A lot more forgiving at the start when you're playing it. Uh, and also, we have multiplayer and the kid in our dies. Games, which Tony Hawk's doesn't. You've got a circus a shopping mall, an aircraft carrier, uh, and a sports stadium. We have a number of multiplayer modes. These include a simple point-based game where you've got up to three opponents that you've got to try and outpoint doing tricks. Also, we've got a grind game where you've got to try and make sure you grind a further distance uh, than any of your opponents. Yeah, I've never heard of that game. Right, we're almost done with Volume 5, just in a few minutes. Ooh, Wario Land 4. That game's pretty good. A giant golden pyramid has mysteriously appeared, so Wario dashes off to loot the place. Along the way, must defeat each of the four pyramid guardians facing the final mystery boss. There's so much in this game, it's unbelievable. It's brilliant fun to play, with an inspired blend of puzzle and action elements. It has immense longevity and superb graphics and sound, and it hasn't appeared anywhere else. No cheap SNES conversion here. In fact, it's a genuine Game Boy Advance classic that will stand the test of time and take its place among 96%. the all-time great platformers. I would say that's a deserved 96%. That's a really good game. Yeah, Wario Land 4 has like multiple endings to it, I remember that. Got some good endings in there. You can't go far wrong with Tetris, or can you? Time and again, new variations on the classic game offer pointless additions to the formula, reducing the fun. Fortress sees you building protective walls with the falling blocks, earning bonus points and special weapons for completing block combinations. You then blast the hell out of your opponent's fort while he does the same to you. Although original, Fortress lacks depth. It's fun for a while, but each stage plays the same as the last, with only the graphics changing. It's a little more fun in the two-player mode, but ultimately, Fortress is a wasted opportunity. That's a weird concept for a game. Build your fortress with, like, Tetris pieces. Anyone old enough to remember Double Dragon will find WWF Betrayal suspiciously familiar. The plot's almost identical. Rescue the girl, here Stephanie McMahon, from the evil kidnappers. The side-scrolling beat-em-up action's the same too, with fist and foot combat and the occasional weapon. Unfortunately, it's just as repetitive too. It's fun for a while, and WWF fans will love it. But for everyone else, it's unoriginal and ultimately stale. It does kind of look like a Double Dragon style game, which is weird it's for a, a wrestling game. Tip, but a good one. Press select in the starting area, shorten your stick, making the game easier. Keep pressing it to shorten your stick even further. You can't set a record with a short stick, but it's great for practice. And remember, completing the challenge mode gives access to five new courses, and completing story mode with perfects on every puzzle opens yet more stages. That wraps it up for this month's Action GBX. Next month, we've a brace of Game Boy Advance games for you, as well as some sizzling previews and hopefully a great competition. Stay tuned and never miss an episode. Oh yeah, there's no, there's no competition in this one. That's weird. They also didn't have like a sponsorship placement for the Action Replay GBX, or you know, like a five-minute interview or like 
a giveaway for it. Uh, I've never played that, like, see that rotating stick thing? I've never played that game, but I've seen it. It looks interesting. Uh, so we've got four more of these left. I don't know if I feel like doing them right now. I think I'm, like, kind of burned out on, like, doing this. It was kind of an experimental thing on my part to, like, stream these, like, back to back. But I'm going to save, like, maybe we'll do these another night or something. We'll do, like, we only have, like, four more left. We've got volume six, seven, nine, and ten. Volume eight is missing. Like, volume eight is nowhere to be found. Like, I scoured YouTube and Google. I couldn't find it. So that one may be potentially lost media. Who knows? But yeah, for now, we're going to stop this. And I think we'll maybe save the last four for next time, because that could easily be at least an hour's worth of content right there. So I hope you guys found that enjoyable, maybe a little bit entertaining, maybe interesting, like fascinating possibly. Just seeing what was essentially like a time capsule of like old VHS tapes from the UK like 20 years ago. Pretty much, yeah. But maybe eventually I'll come back and do that. I'll see how I feel on it. And... Yeah, I don't really have much more to add on top of that, so we'll see.